Welcome back to Andy Cooks, and today we're talking all about Eggs Benedict. Well, we're actually gonna talk about all three versions of Eggs Benedict. The classic Eggs Benedict, which is made with ham, or tradition it's actually made with bacon, but more commonly now it's made with ham. The Eggs Royale, which is made with smoked salmon. And the Eggs Florentine, which is made with sauteed spinach. So yes, they all do have different names. And I know in most restaurants and cafes, it's just Eggs Benedict with either ham, bacon, spinach, or salmon, but they do have different names. And I think the reason that most restaurants don't call that out is it's just space on the menu. That's pretty much the reason why I don't think everyone labels it out as three different dishes. It's effectively all the same dish, with just with diff different middle parts. So toasted muffins, hollandaise sauce, and then I'll either ham, spinach, or salmon. So legend has it, this dish was invented in the late 1800s in a hotel called the Waldorf Hotel in New York, where a pretty hungover banker walked into the hotel for breakfast, and he ordered buttered toast, poached eggs, crispy bacon, and a side of hollandaise sauce. And for good reason, it's delicious. It's one of those fantastic breakfasts to have when you've got a few people around and you, you feel like putting a bit of effort into it, but it's not super complicated to make and some great techniques from it. So hollandaise sauce being the key one, and then poaching eggs. Hollandaise sauce can be also made into Bernays sauce really easily by the addition of tarragon, um, but we're just gonna stick to the traditional hollandaise sauce today, where we're gonna have clarified butter, so we'll clarify some butter, which is a really easy process as well. Then we're gonna make a savillon with our egg yolks and some apple cider vinegar, and then we'll emulsify our fat or our clarified butter into our egg yolks. People are often really scared by this, but once you nail it, it becomes a lot easier and there's no kind of real tricks. There's a thousand ways to do it. The way I'm gonna talk about it today is the way that the kind of, I was classically taught how to do it with clarified butter. A lot of people do just use um, just melted butter or ice um, cube butter, but I think the, the product that you get with a clarified butter is worth the extra step. Anyway, let's get stuck in. But before we do, do me a huge favor and subscribe if you're not, and go hit that like button because it helps me out heaps. Time to clarify some butter. So clarified butter, I've got 250 grams of butter, uh, unsalted butter, into a pot and just over a medium high heat. <clears throat> and we're gonna melt that. And then once we melt it, we're gonna turn it right down and just let, uh, let it kind of tick over. And what we're doing is separating the milk solids uh, from, the, from the butter effectively. So you're gonna end up with a really clear butter. Once that's done, we're gonna let that cool down a bit. It doesn't need to be like ice cold, but you don't want it boiling hot. And we'll start making our savion to make our hollandaise sauce. You can see here the butter's starting to boil and we're starting to get some foam on the top. So it's important you just start get, taking that off. Uh, and at this point, you really want to control the temperature. You don't want this to turn into burned butter. Um, you don't want, which is basically <clears throat> kind of how you make ghee. You just want to clarify it. So all we're trying to do is getting rid of all these milk solids. So keep an eye on it. Turn the temperature right down low. And you'll see when it clarifies, everything will drop to the bottom pretty quickly. This is also something you can do ahead of time. You can uh, make this you know, a, a day, a week in advance, and then just chuck it in the fridge and then melt it down when you need to use it. All right, this is what our clarified butter is looking like. And I'm actually gonna turn the heat off at this point. One last skim. And then we're just gonna let it sit for a while. And what that's gonna do is let all the milk solids that are left over sink to the bottom. And then it'll drop the temperature a bit as well, which will help us when we make our hollandaise. So I'm just gonna let that sit there for 10 minutes, and then we'll come back. All right, so got a nice clear clarified butter left. We're just gonna pour that into something so that we can pour it when we're making our sauce. And be careful not to pour too much as you're gonna, you don't want all the fats that are sitting right at the bottom right there to come in. There's our clarified butter. So we just want that to cool a bit before we use it. So right now it's probably a bit hot, so we're just gonna let that cool down a little bit, and then we'll start making our savion. Time to make the hollandaise. So what we have is a pot with some water in it, just simmering over a low heat. We have a bowl, glass or metal, it doesn't really matter. Uh, this bowl in particular is actually called a savion bowl. You see how it's super round? Um, you don't need a savion bowl, any bowl will do, but if you do have one, perfect. You need a whisk. Ideally something big, you don't want a small whisk. Three egg yolks. Add a tablespoon of apple cider vinegar. Start whisking. 
So when you're whisking, make sure you don't stop. Make sure you're getting all the sides. Now I'm gonna turn the, the temperature off now completely. Let some of that steam escape and keep whisking. Now we start adding the butter slowly. Pour a bit in, make sure it's completely incorporated before you add any more. It's also really important that if this gets too thick, it'll also split. So if it starts looking like it's really stiffening up, just a little touch of water will stop that immediately. So a little touch of water, just to let that down again. A bit more butter. And there we go. So this is what we're looking for consistency wise. A nice custardy like sauce that'll stick to the back of a spoon really well. Just like that. You have a taste, it's definitely gonna need salt. And we'll add a little bit of lemon juice. Lemon juice just wakes it up a bit. Salt. Yeah. Half a teaspoon. See what it goes, how it tastes. Yeah, pretty good. So there you go. So you got your acidity from the apple cider vinegar and the lemon, salt, the butteriness of the clarified butter, and the creaminess of the egg yolks. In a restaurant, we would make a tarragon reduction instead of the vinegar, but I definitely don't bother making that at home. So we're just gonna leave that at the back over that water, which is kind of, you know, still warm. And every now and then, every time I walk past it, I'm just gonna give it a mix. And what that does is stops it from getting a skin. So you wanna, you can't serve the sauce cold. It's gotta be a hot sauce or a warm sauce. Um, if you try and cool this down, it's gonna split. All right, poaching eggs. This is how I poach eggs. Lots of different ways. If you've got a way that works, then stick to it. This is how I do it. Big pot of boiling water, rapidly boiling. So two tablespoons of apple cider vinegar. You won't taste it, don't worry. Once you come, that comes back up to boil, I'm not a huge fan of the swirling method. Um, if you are gonna swirl, I think it's best not to swirl too hard. Um, Cause what I find is that the yolk comes away from the yolk, uh, sorry, the white comes away from the yolk more. But anyway, swirl or don't swirl, it's kind of up to you. But what I'm looking for is a lot of these rapid, little small rapid bubbles. And what that does, as soon as you put the egg in it, those bubbles wrap around it and create that nice golf ball looking shape. So, I'm happy with that. Let's start cracking eggs in there. So crack one egg, let it just come off the bottom, and then you can go on with your next one. Immediately, I saw that last egg that I cracked in there, the white just went oof, and that to me means it's gonna be a bad egg. Um, means that the white's probably a bit older than the other one, or the egg's a bit older than the other ones for whatever reason, and it's just run away from the yolk. Anyway, I'm gonna put a lid on that, or another frying pan. And just, I just want that to come up to temperature again pretty quickly, and then we're gonna control the temperature. So as soon as I see that, I could hear that coming up, I took the, 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 uh, the pan off it. So I'm not swirling here, all I'm doing is just making sure the eggs aren't stuck to the bottom, which is what can happen if you crowd the pan too much. So if you want a soft egg, it usually takes about three minutes from kind of start to finish. Well, three and a half minutes, really. Start checking them at three, though. Beautifully, just cooked. That's what we're looking for. Time to assemble. So we've got toasted muffins. It's a hot tray. Next time, we've got our beautiful poached eggs. So we're gonna season these before we put them on. I think that's super important. And I also, I'm not a fan of uh, buttering my muffins. I think there's enough butter in the hollandaise sauce. So next up, we've got our garnishes. So we've got the wilted spinach. So this is just wilted with a little bit of, uh, a little bit of butter and seasoning. And with this one, make sure you put a little well in the center, just so that the egg sits on there nicely. I used to work in a restaurant in London that used to make us pick the stems off the baby spinach. Psycho. Definitely don't cook like that anymore. All right, so there's our spinach. Now next we're gonna go ham. I'm perfectly fine with putting this on cold. You can chuck it in a pan briefly if you want. 
or you can do crispy bacon is also really nice. And last but not least, my favorite, Royale. We'll get Babe to come in and have a taste in a second as well and see who, what her favorite is. All right, eggs on next. Last, but most definitely not least, time for the sauce. Or actually not last, we're gonna put another little garnish on at the end. So you want about, you know, a tablespoon and a half. You want to completely cover the egg. And a little bit extra to mop up. So the amount that I've put in the recipe here is enough to comfortably do four portions. Then we're gonna put a few chives on the salmon ones. Gonna put a little bit of smoky paprika on our spinach and a bit of black pepper. There we have it. Eggs Benedict three ways. Let's see what tastes best. Hey babe, you wanna try some Benedicts? Oh good. What are you gonna go with first? Florentine. Whew. Runny. Oh yeah. Really good holidays. Alright. I'm a Royale man all the way. I didn't even need to taste the rest. I reckon I'm gonna go with the Florentine. The Florentine? Yeah. Well, I'm Royale all the way. Thanks for watching, Legends. Subscribe if you're not. Smash that like button, please, and we'll see you next Sunday for another recipe. Peace.